Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and Happy New Year! Welcome to the first video on the channel this year, and I'm with my fiancée, Panna Princess. I look like you've got blue eyes in this. I do look like you have blue eyes in this. And to explain why we're making this video... I was having a rant. She was having a rant this morning. We, we woke up... <laughs> we were both, really. We woke up, we went downstairs, we made ourselves some breakfast, we said Happy New Year to everyone. My parents went out for the day... We were both downstairs talking about... Well, it started off because we had... Uh, Sherlock on. Sherlock on TV. The TV series. And that has Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman in it. Who, of course, are stars of the Hobbit film trilogy. Now, you are a massive Middle Earth geek. You have read the books. You have watched the movies. You have the extended editions of The Lord of the Rings and also all of the Hobbit films. I'm also a fan as well, not as much as you. No. <laughs> um, and we were talking about how they could have changed so much with those films. How the Battle of the Five Armies is basically... Shit. It's the last Jedi version, basically, of the Hobbit and, to a bigger extent, the Middle-Earth kind of sagas. So, yeah. because Star Wars films are really good, and then the last Jedi is like, whoop, takes a nosedive, and Battle of the Five Armies does that to this kind of series of films. And we were talking about what we think was good and bad and what they could have changed in those films. So we were talking about certain characters, which I think would be a good point to probably start off on this. So, in the film, which characters do not appear in the book, Panda? So, there's a couple. Cariel is obviously the obvious one, because she was made up especially for the films. And she were... I read somewhere that Philippa Boyens wanted a feminine touch to the film. Right, okay, fair enough. You know, do what you want to do. We have Legolas. Yeah, played by Orlando Bloom, of course, coming back, who looks much older in these films, even though he's supposed to be 60 years younger. Is the guy in Lake Town that's always against Bard called Alfred? Yeah. Who's based basically off Wimtail from the Two Towers. Yeah. And. Yeah, he was in Return of the King, wasn't he? Briefly. I think he's in the Briefly extended. He's the in the beginning. extended, wasn't he? I think he's more in the extended. I can't remember. He was in the extended. The reason I know that, although I think I'm getting the timeline mixed up, two, maybe two towers actually. You know when Saruman dies. It's the, the begin. It's the beginning of. Uh, Return of the King. Return of the, King. Return of the King. He's in because yeah. Wormtongue's in that scene in the extended. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he's at, he's at the top of the thing, basically laughing yeah. his head off. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. See, I know my shit. <laughs> Sometimes I know my shit. So there's a cast of characters that don't appear. Also, there's a grave kind of misuse of the characters in these films. So, for example, you got Thorin, who is Oakenshield. Oakenshield. He is the king. He is the. He's the king in exile. He's yeah. not really the king because he doesn't have a kingdom at the moment. But as far as the plot goes, in a structure of like a king, a blah, blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. a king. He's coming back to reclaim his homeland, and that's his drive. And you see his sort of rise and eventual kind of downfall before his redemption. That's kind of his story arc, I suppose, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, would say that. And then you've got Killy and Philly. Who in the books? What are they? They are Thorin's sister sons. So his sister Dees uh, um, is their mother. So they are next in line to the throne, but it is through the female line. Yeah. So in the films, you've got Orlando. No, I don't. You've got Dino Gorman. Yes. <laughs> Get the I love Dino Gorman. You've got Dino Gorman playing Philly, and you've got Aiden Turner playing Killy. And Killy gets a hell of a lot more screen time than Philly. Okay, this really annoyed me because. Philly is the elder of the two. It says in... It's either the obituaries or... I'm sure it's the obituaries, in fact. That they actually like... Well, Philly is older by Keely by five years. So then he's crown prince after Thorin is. So, you know, you would think, oh, you know, he's going to be Thorin's age. He should, you know, be shown a bit more. And when they do his eventual death, it's actually going to mean something. You're going to be like, oh, no. I was like that anyway, but you were just like, oh well. Yeah, so to the, to the casual viewer, they're just not going to know what's going they're on. They're not emotionally invested in him no. enough, because he hasn't had enough screen time to kill him off. Yeah, there's no payoff. They kill him off at the end of the film, you're like, right, okay. And I also on. didn't like the way they did kill him off, because 
all they show is literally him being dragged out by Azog. And yeah, yeah, he wanted to protect his brother and everything, and that's why he was there, because he said to Keely to do the lower levels and he'd take the upper levels. And I'm just like, all he did was, like, pull him over the edge and throw him, basically. You know, stick him through and throw him, like, he was a piece of shit. And I was like, he deserved a better death than that. Yeah, it, definitely. So, another character that we haven't mentioned yet is Dane Ironfoot. So, who is Dane Ironfoot? Explain to the people who he is and why is he, why is he important in this story. Dane Ironfoot is Thorin Oak and Shield's cousin. I remember, I haven't read up on my law in a while. <laughs> so, I believe he is Thor's brother's grandson. So, Thor, who is obviously Thorin's grandfather, there was three brothers. Thor? Thor. <laughs> With an F instead of a TH. I like how you look at the, that and not the camera <laughs> as well. You do what I always do. Not knowing where the camera is. <laughs> and Grow. So, yeah, is the other one. No, they're, they're so creative with these names, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> no, because brothers always have na- um, Roman names. Yeah. So, the one line you have Balin, Dwalin, Gloin, and Oin descended from. And then the other line is Dain Ironfoot. So, like, Balin and Dwalin are the generation below Thorin. So technically they're like Philly and Killy's generation. Yeah. Then so Dane has the actual link to the throne before Balin Dwalin Gloin or Ain do. I know, it gets all confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused already. <laughs> There's so many similar dwarves. So names. so long story short, Dane Ironfoot is Thorin's cousin who is next in line after Philly and Killy to the throne of um Erebor, but he is the Lord of the Iron Hills, which is a long beard clan. The Dwarves mainly are long beards. Apart from apart, from, no, that's what the clan is called. Apart yeah. from um, Biffa Buffer and Bomber, who are, I think they're broad beams. But don't quote me on that, just in case. That might have just been something that was made up for the film series, and they're like, oh, they're different. Okay, so in the film, Day Nine Foot is in the film. He comes in right at the end when you yeah. actually have the battle. And he just sort of appears. He goes around calling people bastards, didn't he? He goes around calling people bastards. He looks a little bit badass on his big ball, ball thing that he's yeah. got. Starts killing orcs by the thousands, basically, doesn't he? And it's like, oh, cool. Who is this guy again? Because as a casual viewer, that's what you're thinking. He's not introduced very well. I mean, when they're on the parapets, when Thorin is like full on in the middle of the gold sickness, he sends the raven off to the Iron Hills. But like... You don't know if, like, where the raven's going. You don't know how the raven's communicating with, like, Dane and everything. You just don't know what's happening because the ravens of Erebor can only speak to those of Durin's blood. But not everyone is of the royal line, so not everyone can hear the raven speak. And it's like... Yeah, it is a bit annoying, I suppose. They, what I think they could have done, they could have... Well, you've got the orcs... And you've got like the big slag things that go underground and, and big, you know, dig the big holes and stuff. They, I think they, they call sort of earth movers. I don't earth movers. Really yeah. Know. When you got that scene in the film, what would have been good is before the battle when you're showing them set up, you could have had the alternative where you could have had Dane Ironford receive some sort of message or something. Yeah. Have him talking to somebody and say, right, we're moving to battle, and see him organizing the dwarves. So then you know, oh, we got Dane. The dwarves are going to have aid, and then just. Narratively, I would have made a lot more sense to me. What's interesting is in an unexpected journey when they're all in Bag End and they're all around Bilbo's uh, table eating food. Balin says to Thorin, is, no, Dwalin says it, is Dane with us? Yeah. And Thorin goes, they will not come. So it's like that would have been a nice little lay-in that you could be like Dane going, oh, I've made a terrible mistake. I should have yeah. I should have been there from the start of everything. They instead. could have tied it up nicely from the first film to the third film. Yeah. It would have made sense narratively. It would have introduced Dane much better than what they did in the actual film. Yeah. And it was for, for somebody like me, or more like me, who's more of a casual viewer than a nerd, uh, I would have sort of understood what was going on. Yeah. I, think that's, I had to explain a lot to you, didn't I, when we actually the, left? That's not cinema. a good sign to the films, though. That's no. a terrible sign for the films, yeah. when you have to explain what's going on to somebody because they're not in with the in with the law. I mean, you've got to remember that these films, of course, they cater to um, the source material, but with these newer films of The Hobbit, they kind of ruined that source material as well. They, they did their own thing a lot of the time, which didn't make sense structurally. So, for example, we've got... 
Shall we do the Tariel? No, let's do the White Council first. So the White Council first, really okay. really annoys me. In that the White Council show up to Dol Guldur to take on Sauron. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, and like Saruman's like, I will protect you, my lady, and everything to Gladriel. And she banishes him back to, like, thing. And then, like, Gandalf in, like, literally in Fellowship goes, I must go and research this. And I must go and make sure that I know what's going on. And I'm like, yeah, but like 60 years ago, you've now contradicted your story. In that you've, you've, he already knows that he's there. Thank you. And I put that there <laughs> so that it looks like you look at the camera. Because my OBS is over there. I keep there. doing this. I know, I've not done a look at you all the time and going, what are you looking with here for? Uh, yeah, so the White Council does not make sense. No, like, they are there in the book and they do gather. But thank you. See your head as well now. Yeah. <laughs> and they they do gather in Rivendell, and you know which... it doesn't make sense. I don't think it does. And then you've got like okay, so we should talk a little bit about the actual filming process that they've done. So, um, at the time that when they filmed these films, it was going to be two oh, films. Going to be two films, but then the the sponsors, the producers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, it was then. It was Warner Brothers. It was Warner Brothers. Was yeah. It? it was Warner Brothers who wanted to make a three. Yeah. They wanted to make a three films, which is what actually happened. When they first started filming, they had a big cast of dwarves, and all the dwarves are sort of given their, uh, their respective roles, their own characters. They were all out of their lines and stuff in the films, and it, they act as a count and said it was more of a brotherhood kind of bond that they all had when filming, and that's kind of what was, was going to be shown on screen. And in the first film, you kind of see that to a certain extent, especially when you're in Bilbo's home and you've got them all around the table and they're throwing plates about and they're I singing. I feel as if with that it starts to lose it really when when they leave Bill, when they leave the Shire. No, when cuz you still got that like camaraderie in Rivendell. Yeah. But then when they leave Rivendell and they've gone through Goblin Town and when they go in um Thorin is fighting Azog. I feel as if you see it there it's like you got Philly and Killy who come out straight away with Dwalin, but all the rest of them are just literally stuck on the tree. Yeah. They're not doing anything. They're just and I'm like, about... I'm literally like, well, Nori would be able to get out of that situation for starters because he's a thief. Yeah. So he can get out of any sort but of situation. But of course, you wouldn't situation. know that in the film, so he's a thief, really, would you? No, you, would, you wouldn't know anything about it. And it's like, you wouldn't know it unless you watched the, uh, the 10 plus hours of extra footage from the extended edition because they wanted to make him a thief, but they didn't explain that in the thing. No. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense at all. At the time in New Zealand as well, there was some sort of battle going on between the, sort actors, of the, guild, the actors Guild, I think it was, New Zealand Actors Guild and, yeah. and how they wanted to keep filming and keep stuff in New Zealand and New Zealand actors weren't getting screen time. They had to constantly move to Europe and stuff to try and get the good roles, but they were just getting overlooked all the time. So this was sort of going on at the time and then basically they went, right, we're not going to film any more New Zealand. We're going to go to Europe instead. We're going to go to the, the UK. So then most of the scenes were CGI and done sort of in like a warehouse in London. And then you had... No, that's what they wanted to do. That's what they wanted to do. Yeah, but the New Zealand government came up with a compromise. And then the that's government? Why it was the New Zealand government who came up with oh. a compromise. And they said, well, if we do this, will you keep shooting them here? And then that's how it came about. Like the only fil- scenes that were filmed in the UK were the ones with Ian Holm and Christopher Lee. Because... They couldn't travel. They were too ill to travel. It's quite sad that that was the last thing that Christopher Lee was in as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it was like a year or so lately he passed away, wasn't it? it might be even less than a year. Mm. It wasn't long after the film came out, I know that. Um, which, okay, it makes sense. They, they're, old, they're a lot older when they were doing their scenes. I can understand that. But it's like 90. <laughs> the one thing I can't understand, I did mention CGI just then, the oh. terrible CGI in, in the films... For the most part, most, mostly in the Battle of the Five Armies. Yeah, in the. I mean, it's the it's the ultimate film. It's like this the the last film... delge within Middle Earth that we're gonna get in probably an hour. So generation. unexpected journey was fine. I didn't yeah. mind the CGI too much in that. Das Eisha Smaug was really good on Smaug. They poured so much into him. And his the character. gold. And the gold in the treasure and room. And... In my opinion, out of the three films they produced, the scenes between Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch as Bilbo and Smaug as they're there in the layer with all the gold back and forth the cgi the acting probably up there with the best in, in the entire trilogy in my opinion I agree. um i'm also you'll be to correct me if i'm wrong with this but it's, that sort of scene didn't change an awful lot either from the original source material it was it's pretty on point to what 
happened thereabouts. Whereas most of the other stuff did change in some way. So Toriel, a massive change. So they brought in Evangeline Lily to play Toriel, who's a red-headed elf who basically is involved in a love triangle between Orlando Bloom, a.k.a. Legolas in the films, and also Killy, yeah. a.k.a. Aiden Turner. Other way around. Aiden Turner, a.k.a. Killy. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and I, if you don't know who Evangeline Lily is, she was a character in Lost called Kate, which was a popular TV show that was on years ago, where she was involved in, guess what? A love, love triangle. triangle. Yeah, which it worked for Lost. It was pretty good um, at times. And then she's, I think she said in an interview she didn't want, she didn't want to be, do something that involved in another yeah. love triangle. She wanted to be her own character, basically. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to obviously fill the uh, quota of kind of on-screen female cast because... They that's... wanted to bring femininity to Yeah, which is happening quite a lot in films, especially the past few years, I think. But as a woman, I don't really care if a film does have another... No, I don't mind. The thing is, I'm all for... Oh, What's I say... the test called? You have to have... A test, you you have it? to have two, at least... Um, Two females interact with each other, and it can't be about a guy. Yeah. But I can't remember what the test is called. This is where you come in the comments. Please. Yeah, you can't, let us know if you know what this test is called. Because they did it in um, Star, Star Wars, Wars Force but, Awakens. Yeah, but the only reason they passed is because Leia says to Rey, the may end. the Force be with you. And that's it. That's yeah. the only reason they passed. But I hate it because it ruins... When you when that's your driving point of the film, when you shoehorning characters in... It ruins the overall plot and authenticity of the actual yeah. product, I think. She did a good job. She did a good job with Toriel, but then Toriel shouldn't have been there. Or they could have rewrote her. Like, have her in the film by all means, but rewrite her character so that she doesn't get involved with the dwarves at all. So, Killy and Philly are basically able to grow as, as their characters. Own. And so, then their deaths mean a bit more because it, you got that bond between yeah. the brothers more. Because what happened was that storyline of the whole love triangle thing it's basically pushed, pushed Philly down there. Yeah. Killy was sort of like, he's supposed to be like royalty, he's supposed to be this badass warrior, he's supposed to have all these kind of things. And then instead he's like, oh, I'm a lovesick puppy. Yeah. They're dying on the table, like singing, dreaming of his mother or something, isn't he? And then, <laughs> and then she sort of pops up or something like that. Dreaming of his mother? He says something about his mother, doesn't he? He does. Mm-hmm. I dreamt that part. But <laughs> the point is, I can't even remember, so I showed you how bad something it was. Something about Starlight, he said. Starlight, yeah, and then they got this whole kind of weird orgasm, almost looking kind of facial expressions when she's really? doing. She's basically pressing down, <laughs> doing all this like magic with all these leaves and magic mushrooms and stuff. And King's file, yeah, that stuff. Athelus. King's file, and then yeah, it's weird. The eyes they keep giving each other, a bit weird. I, I wasn't sure I was still watching a film <laughs> like that at that point. I kind of, I kind of, you know, thinking other things, but that's just that's just me. So. um her character, what would you have done better with her character? Well, I wouldn't have put her into a love triangle. I would have tried to put her to get, you know, chase Legolas. So Legolas shouldn't be in her either. We should point that out. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. in the books either. But they wanted Orlando Bloom. They wanted star power. What I would have done is put her into a love story with Legolas. And then Thranduil, Legolas' father, would have been like, you can't, you can't be in love with this, this Sylvan and like really have a go at him about it. Because basically, she's like down here in the hierarchy of the elves, and he is like literally way up here because of his bloodline. Yeah. And it's like, it's not acceptable. And then, like, he basically says that, Thrandio does. And then he's like, but I have to go after her. Yeah, I. So. But no, I would have put her into a love story with him. Yeah. Instead, so then that would have like sort of freed Keely up to be with Philly in order have to a... give them a bit more of the brother bond. Then the death scenes would have meant a bit more because he was sacrificing Philly was sacrificing Keely. Yeah, no other way around. He was sacrificing himself for Keely. And then what I would have done is I I would have put um Legolas stand in like with his father on the battlefield, and then like. Instead of that stupid bloody fight scene with Bog with the shit CGI when he's running up the thing. And he's going, oh, 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 oh. The CGI is probably at its worst in that scene because you can oh, see the bricks. Pathetic. You can it's see so the so bad. You see the bricks falling. He's able to basically do a Super Mario and walk up all of these yeah. while doing like a bloody whatever with his sword. Yeah. And then land perfectly while Ball basically crashes to his death. And it's like that's just, I know like it's fantasy and they take liberties quite a lot. But, oh, that's, but that was just shit. That just, was just really bad CGI. You've gone from uh, <laughs> Minas Tirith, no, you've gone from Minas Tirith as far as the overall thing. Minas Tirith and all the epic battle scenes you've had in the original 
I thought you were just gonna go on about Minas Tirith then. No. And I'm like, that was a. That's the point I'm making. That was a miniature. This is the point. This is the point I'm making. though. they could make awesome epic battle scenes in the original. The battle of parallel fields. Yeah, you mentioned we mentioned them off the top of our heads, but yeah, um, off in the original. No, that's what the battle's called. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, in the original trilogy, which didn't have the CGI. Helms Deep. Helms Deep is the big one. Yeah, they made those epic battles feel real, authentic. Love that in the moment, as a viewer, you, you you know, the battle goes on for like an hour. You're there, gripped to all of it. The characters got their roles, nothing's out of place. And you go from that to, what's it, 15, 18 years later when they made this film? Oh, it was like 10 years later. 10 years later, yeah. well, sorry. <laughs> 10 years later, and they fucked it up. Like, you've got all this stuff at your disposal and they can't even make a decent battle scene with two characters, let alone a whole army. And it was like literally, it was five armies. <laughs> it was five. Okay, so who are the five armies? We should probably explain that as well. Right, it's different in the book and the film. Okay, so okay, so the book first. So we got the dwarves. Yeah. Dwarves. The elves. Elves. Men. Men. The orcs. Orcs. And the um, the bats are classed as the fifth army in the books. The bats. Yeah. Or bats. The one the Lilish is hanging upside down from and he shoots things up. The class fights an army? Yeah. All right, that's interesting. So they're the five armies, Yeah, right? and then in the films, I think they said it was the dwarves, the elves, the men. Yeah. And then they split the two orcs into two factions. Yeah. So you had Bolg's faction and then Ozog's faction. See, I always took it as the orcs as one faction and then Dane being the other army because his yeah. army came in. So you didn't even fucking explain that properly. It's the title of the film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even that confused me. So that film came out in the state that it did with bad CGI, bad acting, a not very good B-plot, I guess you could say, with the whole love triangle. At the end of the film, you have the scene with Legolas, Toriel, and then also Thranduil. Go and explain... The amount of inconsistencies in this scene. So Kitty's dead, gone, and then Thranduil says to Toriel, "Didn't he?" And she, she goes, she, she she goes, goes "Why does it hurt so much?" Yeah. And then he goes, "Because, because it was, was real." real. <laughs> and then you're like, "No, it wasn't." She literally knew him for a week. Yeah, in in film like <laughs> first, it's like a, a week. It felt days. like it was a week. They, yeah, they should have drawn her out if they felt like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's fair, right? Then. Legolas is looking in at the scene and he goes around like literally the corner in um, Ravenhill and his dad is there and then he says to him go north see the Dúnedain and I'm like this is set 60 years before the Lord of the Rings right Aragorn is is he something in Lord of the Rings I can't think of top of my head I know he's in his 80s okay he's in his 80s right so like 60 years before be 20. He wasn't really part of the design. I'm like, the 80 or 60? They basically say, go and find Aragorn. Yeah, he basically That's... says, go go find Aragorn, go find the Dúnedain, train with the Dúnedain. And I'm like, the Dúnedain would have been run by um, Elrond's sons at this point. Yeah. So the Aladan and Elro here. So again, though, that's... That's people working on set, people who were making this, doing the scripts and stuff will not take into account what they've previously set before them. Like, they could have made that so much better. Mm. They didn't even have to put the whole Aragorn thing in. Well, they could have done, perhaps. I mean, for starters, we all know that Legolas goes off and finds Gollum instead. Yeah. Because Gol- he's in the Woodland Realm. Gollum is found within the Woodland Realm. So then Thranduil sets Legolas off, like, it's a couple of years after this, like, before the start yeah. of the Lord of the Rings. But then, but if he's been with the Dúnedain, how is he back in the Woodland Realm exactly at the point that Gollum's in there? Yeah. You know? Doesn't make sense. They could. One thing they didn't really use much of in this film is using sort of um, flashbacks, flash forwards, and stuff as exposition. So what they could have done. They could have. Yeah, they could have done that quite easily in this film. They could have easily had a scene. So the film's ended. You've the main plot's sort of done. Bilbo's going to do his thing, and then you want to leave it on a bit of a sort of thing to lead you into the next film. Just have a nice little flash forward, and then perhaps you'll have them training together, Aragorn and. Legolas or something, just something that sort of ties you in so you know, right, that's where they were now at this point. That makes sense as far as if you're going to watch them from one to six is it in like a narrative kind of order. 
Don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah, just watch. Just watch. Just the watch all the rings. Watch the original one. Forget the other stuff even happened. So, um, any final points you want to make, or anything you think we haven't mentioned, which is glaring, we probably should. So I feel like overall, it is a good saga. If <laughs> if you don't really know much about Middle Earth in a way, it's a good introductory thing for like the kids growing up now to go into <laughs> Lord of the Rings but light then, yeah because, Lord of the no, Rings light for because kids. it is a lot more child friendly but The Hobbit is a kids book but Lord of the Rings isn't but they, The Hobbit is one book yeah and they've made but they, they, use, they use the appendices yeah but they stretch into three films which is a bit over the top and even put stuff in that's not even in the book so and they, they cut out other characters you mentioned all the time like Tom Bombadil and stuff like that don't they no Oh, that really annoyed me because I was like, oh my god, Tom Bombadil's in the Hobbit book. And then we get to see him and we'll get to see um, Keely dr- like fall into the water and he almost drowns. And Tom Bombadil comes around then with his uh, wife Goldberry and like saves him. And, you know, and you get to see all that. And I was like literally watching the cinema and I was like, come on, Tom, where are you, Tom? And there was no Tom Bombadil. And that really fucked me off. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh. I wanted a bit of Tom Bombadil. It was the perfect opportunity to bring Tom Bombadil in instead of all the Tariar shit. Yeah, they they. Why? They wrecked so much of it. They they definitely pulled um a Last Jedi on this franchise with the thing. I mean, okay, let's look past this for a moment. Similarian or another Middle Earth film. What would you do to correct things if you could? As far as say, no, this is the narrative you've been given. Yeah. So everything now in this kind of movie verse is basically movie law. So Tariel now exists in the universe. All the stuff that's happened happens, but you're gonna make another film. Do you just move away from all of this completely now, or do you? So it depends what road they take. I know they're making a Lord of the Rings TV series, but that's gonna be based actually in the time of Lord of the Rings. So it's gonna like, be based for Aragon as well. That's isn't the it? first season. Yeah. The first season is gonna be based on Aragon. So like, but apart from that, if we were doing, say, let's say they decide to make a Silmarillion film. There's a lot of shit that goes on in the Silmarillion. But it's based so long before our, like, almost current timeline. I don't think it would matter anyway. The only characters you would see would be Galadriel, Elrond. You would see uh, Caliborn. You would see Calib. Uh, Calibrimbo, you'd see Calibrimbo. I love Calibrimbo. He's the one who fought the Balrog and yeah. actually brought the Balrog down. Calibrimbo, Shadow of yes. Shadow of yes. War and Shadow of Mordor. Yes, yeah. the same. Same. Yeah, Calibrimbo. You would see um, Galadriel and Calibon's daughter. You would see the choice made between. Elrond, obviously, is known as the Half Elven. You would see the choice between Elrond and his brother Elros. So Elros took the human route, which is what Aragorn's descended from, and then Elrond decided he wanted to stay and live out his life as an elf. Like, you'd see all of that sort of stuff of it, and because his parents... Parents or grandparents? Parents are um, Luthien and Beren, which is what the Silmarillion is based off of. Yeah. So Luthien was a elven princess, and Beren was just a man. But you see them trying to collect like the Silmarils all throughout Middle Earth and everything, and there's a massive fucking fight between them. And so they could uh, make it a pretty good and... movie then. They could yeah. become a pretty good movie, providing they cast. Well, we it would well. actually see Morgoth. We would actually see Morgoth is the. He was Sar- uh, Sauron's master. Right. Which would he, be an he's one spin. of basically one of the gods. So you'd see like a. I might be wrong with this. Like a younger Sauron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, younger you'd see Sauron a younger Sauron. And... Sauron. Right. So it'd be, cool be well. interesting to see how basically he overthrew his master and it would be interesting to see how that played out on the screen and but I would literally near enough discount everything that's happened, even in the Lord of the Ring films, even though it's all technically canon, it doesn't happen for so long in the future from the Silmarillion. I wouldn't even bother, to be honest. Yeah. Right, there's like a brand new yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's got potential. Do you think it'll ever happen? No. 
I really want it to happen as well, but I don't think it will. But at the same time, I don't want Peter Jackson to be like involved in it. Yeah. Because he messed up The Hobbit so much. And he did. You think he can be too involved in things? So like people always but just say But he didn't want to do it, did he? He didn't no, want to direct it. They basically it was forced him. him. Yeah. It's like um, with Star Wars, people used to say that about George Lucas, didn't they? The, he did the originals, it was great. Then he did Phantom Menace. People were like, oh, I think you've lost your touch. Then he did Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And people were like, you've really lost your touch. You need to stay away from these movies. Revenge of the Sith was good. I like Revenge of the Sith. I thought it was pretty good. It had its moments where it was a bit like, yeah. But for the most part, after the prequel trilogy, it was the best one out of the three. Oh, agreed. 100%. But he, he made two poor films, though, and the other two, I, I felt. Yeah. But then, like, obviously Disney got their hands on it. So, so George Lucas is gone. And then you see what J.J. Abrams and other people have. And then it's like, oh my god, bring George Lucas back. No, The Force Awakens was good. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it played too... What's the one after? Last Jedi. Yeah, that was shit. Yeah. But The Last Jedi... The was... fact I can't even remember what it's called. We'll have our own discussion on The Last Jedi, I think. Cause that's... I think we should like do, do like a monthly thing where we do like films and just talk yeah, about them. that's a good idea. Talk about films. But we need to watch series. The Last Jedi again, because I can't remember what happens. I've seen The Jedi. Last Jedi three times. I've seen it once. Have you seen it three times? I... Did I watch it with my dad? I think I watched it with my dad. I watched it with you, originally. I'm sure we've watched it together since. We probably have, but I just can't you remember. You probably fell hands. asleep. <laughs> you fall asleep I'm pretty sure I watched it with my dad. I've seen, I've seen it three times. And then you also had the Han Solo movie, which also sucked. Yeah, I really I didn't like that. So that's... But I enjoyed Rogue One. Yeah, but out of four films that Disney have made... Two have been crap. But it's kind of like a... Well, like you can't, you can't... In a way, it's like Bond, isn't it? Two films are shit. Two films are good. The ones with Daniel Craig? Yeah. Yeah, well, Skyfall was really good and Casino Royale was really good. Yeah. And they're my two favourites. Quantum Solace and Spectre of I can't even remember what Spectre was like, and Quantum of Solace is the same. I was like, what? All it I just... remember about Quantum of Solace is Gemma Arterton was in it. Oh, she's the um, dark-haired yes. girl. She was yes. in Prince, per... Prince of Persia. Yes. Yeah. I quite like that Prince of Persia film, I actually. I liked Prince of Persia. I thought they did do right. That's based on a video game as well, Prince of Persia games. Yeah, but it's nothing like the most, video game. Most video game movies don't <laughs> come out that well. Look at the Resident Evil ones. They were shit. I still watched them I quite like the original one you showed me, the first one. Yeah, the first one was That was, was pretty good. good. Yeah. And then they kind of went shit after that. Right, we're going off on a way yeah. on much of a tangent here. So mm -hmm. we, we like talking about films. Give we us like some, watching films. Give us some suggestions of films in the comment section below. We'll talk. Or we'll watch them if we haven't seen them. If we haven't seen them, we'll watch them. We'll make some time. And then maybe once a month or something. Maybe the first week. Who could... knows? The next new one might be in a new home. Might be in a new home the next time we do this. Um, maybe once a month we'll do it at the start of each month. I don't know how this yeah. will work, but it's something fun for us both to do. We like and watching we like films. To rant. We like ranting. We like talking about things which we think are absolute bollocks and talking about suggestions, how to fix it, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a good idea for a video. We were just talking randomly this morning. We both sort of said, "Oh, we should be recording this." Like, yeah, yeah let's go upstairs and record it. That's exactly what we done. So let us know, guys, what you think of this video. Drop a like if you've enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below. Any suggestions and stuff. And Tell me we'll... what that test is called. Yeah, what's that test called? That movie test that Pan was on earlier. And if you've managed to sit through almost 35 minutes of this, then... Hashtag... Uh, dick. Hashtag... Dick. <laughs> panda... Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag... Hey, panda. that's just another name for you. Yeah. Okay, I've been Dragonheart. She's been Panda Princess. Until next time. Goodbye. <laughs>